Welcome to Impact Duty. I'm your host, Manisha Dadlani Kriplani, bringing you empowering stories of friends and people I admire. Their voices have given me joy and the momentum to share their stories with you. Anmol Singh is the founder of the Banjara Trail. She creates exquisite fusion designs with traditional Indian embroidery. The Banjara Trail works with women from rural and village communities in India with the hope of creating empowerment, financial stability, and a sustainable living for the women and their families, as well as retaining craftsmanship and handwork skills synonymous with the Rajasthani region and culture. Anmol's designs are versatile and global and can be worn in any part of the world. Hi, Anmol. Welcome to Impact Duty. How are you doing? Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Pleasure doing is all mine. Yeah. How's it over there at the moment? Has the, have the monsoons subsided? Well, not really in Delhi. Uh, it's still really hot. But uh-huh. uh, hopefully uh, we're expecting some rain next week. Let's see. Right. Pretty hot. Yeah, I can imagine. And, uh, I can imagine. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're facing a heat wave over here in Europe as well. Yeah. Uh, so I can only just imagine what Delhi is like. But Delhi is always crazy. Like monsoons is just a thing they say, but Delhi hardly mm-hmm. has any. So it's, we're quite used to it. Yeah, but you get, you get sharp winters as well. Um, I mean, your last winter this year was rather cold, right? If I'm not yeah, mistaken. This year, this, uh, yeah, yeah. Last year was, I think after years, uh, Delhi had like a proper winter. Uh, because it had kind of just finished. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and it's supposed to be very good this year also. Really looking forward to it. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. And working yeah. in this heat is like, it's worse. Yeah. Which takes me to work, Anmol. You do some fabulous clothes. Um, I mean, I've had my eye on a lot of your pieces. Uh, but I'm just going to take you to start with your journey and ask you how you got into um, this line of clothing. And have you always been a designer? And is this always what you wanted to do? So how did your journey begin? Um, so, you know, I was always associated with the fashion industry in some way because I was in the television industry. So, like, oh, I had my brief period there in Bombay where I was acting. I was doing a lot of shows and I was a... Uh, VJ with MTV for a bit. Uh, right. So I was always associated with fashion in some way. And, I, you know, I had that bent of mind uh, towards fashion. But um, it really wasn't my passion. Mm-hmm. So I just liked it. But I didn't know what to do with it. You know, I just liked right. to dress up. Uh, it was only later, I think, um, because my father's in the Indian Army. So, right. you know, we got an opportunity to travel a lot. And mm-hmm. a few years back, I was in Rajasthan, uh-huh. in Jodhpur. And, uh, you know, that's where I met a lot of these women. And I and I saw a, lo- a lot of bandhani and I saw a lot of fabrics and um, also in Gujarat. Right. So I was really fascinated with the fabrics. Mm-hmm. But then that was it. You know, it was just like, oh, it's lovely. And what do I do with it? But it kind of, the, the idea stuck in my mind. Uh, uh-huh. But I didn't know what I wanted to do about it until it just kept getting, uh, you know, stronger and stronger that I want to do something with these fabrics. Right. And um, then I started my research about what this work is. So um, I went and I spoke to a lot of these women. I understood how this embroidery is done. And I heard their stories, you know, and I just realized that this this Indian embroidery that we have um uh, it's not getting its due. Mm-hmm. The work and the effort that these women put into it, uh, and no one knows about it. Then when I went online, I saw a lot of designers, you know, Dolce Gabbana, Burberry, you look, you look at anything. When they talk about their Bohemian collection or they put it up, you will always find this work somewhere. Really? And uh, yeah, Banjara work is always there. And, you know, uh, the women don't get credit. The, the embroidery doesn't get uh, credit. And I started talking to these women and I realized how it works, you know, um, how international agents actually come in and they take the fabrics from them. And, you know, they don't even get paid much and they, uh, they don't get their due. And uh-huh. that's when I decided that um, this is crazy. 
this is our embroidery this is this is indian work and in india it's just so limited to chaniya choli or indian wedding right so if i want to go on a date i'm not going to wear any of that and go right mm-hmm. so uh, it's very kind of limited that's when i started thinking that uh, no i need to create something using these fabrics which is universal it mm-hmm. can be worn anywhere in the world and uh, you know that's how we spread the word about what this art is and what this embroidery is so i thought of denim because that's a universal item and uh, so i started with denim jackets i started using uh-huh. this fabric on denim and uh, that's how you know the whole thing started and right. um, yeah and it's just going on and on from there right one more and and more how far back are we looking at as in how many years ago did you uh, begin see uh, this was about 3 years back mm-hmm. uh, so 3 years back the situation was very different than what it is now when i started i got a fabulous response internationally you right. know people connected to the work they wanted to wear it and it was crazy but in india uh it was the opposite oh and, dear and uh, because you know this whole uh, the sustainable thing that has started now with bloggers talking about sustainability and recycling fabric has just actually started about a year and a half two years back mm-hmm. so at that time uh, when i would switch these products to multi designer stores it would be like oh it's beautiful but you know we don't know and i was like you don't know i mean you should be promoting this work and right. now things have changed it's like a 360 degrees because these bloggers are talking about sustainability and the whole bohemian culture is full on mm-hmm. in india and now everybody wants this so yeah. things have changed uh, you know in these two years they really changed mm-hmm. a lot so it's been a struggle but yeah Yeah. And Anmol, I'm going to draw you back to what you were telling us about working with communities of women, predominantly women, right? It's women that do uh, this embroidery mostly, or do we have men and women within uh, um, the communities that do see, the embroidery this, this for you? See, this work, it's mostly women. Mm-hmm. It's mostly women. Because, uh, you know, it's like a, it runs in their family. And right. it runs from generation to generation. So uh-huh. these are basically uh, tribes, you know, they're tribal women in Rajasthan. Exactly. Uh-huh. So this is like their family tradition, which has been going on for ages. Right. And uh, it, is, it is so fascinating, you know, their, their stories are so fascinating. Uh, you, know, it's, it's, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, this particular work that we, uh, like it's called Rabari embroidery, right? Because the tribe is called Rabari. And, uh-huh. Uh, the we use this those on like patches on jackets so right. these women actually start making that fabric as a tradition when a male child is born in the family and they finish it when they have to you know actually get the child married so that wow. the amount of time and years it takes them to make that fabric and their fingers are practically numb you know wow. so when you uh-huh. when you meet them and uh, it's just it, it just gives you goosebumps you know so i tell everybody that that when you buy a jacket from banjara trail or anything it's it has a history you're wearing a piece of art it has our old emotions it has stories it's um, it's not just clothing <laughs> <laughs> like like i said so, i have my eye on a lot of your jackets so i can't wait to get my hands on a piece of your art um where do you get your ideas where does inspiration and ideation stem uh, for you i think um I've always been a very creative person. Uh, that's just something I think it runs in the family. My mom's uh, an artist too, so um, that's just there. But you know what I would say is, um, when you're doing something you're very passionate about, you feel very strongly about it. I think mm-hmm. creativity and uh, success and everything else just follows. So right. you know, if I was doing something which wasn't really my passion, I don't think I would have been so creative. like it right. takes me um uh, 10 minutes to design a jacket so you know my my staff is like oh you you already done so i because uh, for me it's just i'm so passionate about it that it just flows mm-hmm. so that's mm-hmm. what it is All right and um anmol you already highlighted that um it is something that the industry is now focusing in on uh global and globally they've always looked into uh this kind of work however 
even locally, uh, we're seeing a larger focus on um, this kind of embroidery. Do you think you're going to be able to stay relevant? And, and how, how do you believe um, you can sustain yourself into the future? I think, um, you know, um, the, um, the only thing is there are a lot of people who are doing it now. Mm, but I'm very quick with my design. Uh, so the product does well. Uh, you know, I'm not the kind of person who thinks in a way that, okay, this is giving me money. Let me cash on this. Let mm-hmm. me just go on and on. I'm like, this is doing well. People have liked it. Next, next, next. Because like I like I said, I've, I've got like, my mind was over time. It's always working. And um, I, um, I've got so many designs in my mind and I'm always willing to create. Like I can wake up at 3 a.m. There are times when I, when I'm fast asleep and I just wake up because I have an idea. I have a design. Mm-hmm. So I'll just mm-hmm. go and sketch it at like 3 a.m. So uh, I think um, that's the way, um, you know, the company is going to move forward because we're never going to be stuck with limited designs and look at it uh, at a, in a very, you know, business kind of uh, point of view that, okay, we have these four best sellers. Let's mm-hmm. just keep pushing them. That's how you reach that, you know, that level of stagnation. But uh, right. for me, it's just going to be like new designs. And that's what a lot of my uh, followers on Instagram, they actually, uh, they're like, you know, we can't make up our mind because we just think of buying this when our salary is going to come and you've got like 10 more. <laughs> so, like, you know, but my, again, um, my work as a designer is basically to put things out there for people. Uh, right. But then again, we want to just push this art. I, mm. My agenda is that this embroidery should be on so many versatile things that people in Africa, people in London, people in Taiwan, anywhere in the world, <laughs> of course, uh, Europe, everywhere, would see should be able to wear it with anything. You can wear it on your first day. You can wear it on a wedding. Anyway, so I want to put out as many designs as possible with this kind of work so it reaches people worldwide. Wonderful, Anwar. Um, the pandemic opened up a whole load of problems for us in various industries, in various oh, fields. Yes. Um, pandemic and otherwise, what obstacles did you face in your business? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, uh, that's uh, been an issue for everybody. Um, right. Yes, work was, of course, less. And, you know, uh, it was very difficult to kind of maintain the staff and everything. But then, you you know, you've got to do it for them because, you know, they look up to you. Uh, right. So, you know, you have to do it. So, of course, that was tough. But I think um, I utilized my time very well uh, because for me, um, like, I went crazy during uh, during the pandemic. I had so much time <laughs> And I just kept, I did like all my designing that I wanted to. I planned, I did my research. I So I made my mood boards and I utilized wow. it like to the teeth. So that was really good because otherwise it gets a little, uh, you know, hectic for me. Like I, like I told you, because I'm working like practically all day, uh, right. all night. So it's only when I, um, when I sleep at night, I get ideas and then there's very less time to kind of implement them. So, right. and that's also because, you know, being a woman entrepreneur, uh, I mean, things are changing, but in India, it's still very tough uh, to, you mm-hmm. know, kind of put it all together. So, yeah, okay. time limit was great because, you know, got a lot of time to do my research and designing and everything. Yeah. Wow. I'm glad to hear that. I'm really glad to hear that. And even communicating with all the people um, in the in the communities, was it was it not difficult or you didn't have an issue? There? Um, yeah. So, you know, um, when I started meeting these women, Oh, uh, what I realized was uh, they were just uh, they were creating whatever they were doing, you know, with their embroidery uh, for money. Okay, because right. obviously they they wanted money, and a um, lot of brands talk about the fact that they work with local artisans, they local they work with women. We all work towards financial independence. We want them to be financially independent, which is great. Wonderful. But what I do with them is a bit different. You know, I realized that. Um, need to instill a sense of self-worth in these women. Mm. So what I do is when I when they create fabric, I always make it a point to show them that look, this is this is what you did and this is what I made you do. And you know that Bollywood actress, I'll show them the video. She's wearing <laughs> it. Or you know, this is going to London. 
and you know they get so happy and they can't believe it and they're like what they like bibi we can't believe this that we made this and, you know but that instills a sense of self worth in them that what they are exactly. creating is magical and they are capable of creating something that is so beautiful and they work harder and they they kind of come up with their own design they will you know they want to pitch in they want to use things but and that for me is i mean i love that so right you know, and you know you want to you want to do that to them because it should it should just not be money right because exactly. financial independence is one thing but self worth it kind of helps you in every area of life so uh that's what you know i kind of uh, aim to do with them all the time wonderful i like that i really do and um how have you used social media successfully to grow your business cuz like i said i keep coming back to your reels and your videos and i love what you wear uh but tell me about how you've used it successfully yes yeah, so um personally if you ask me i'm um, i'm not a very social media kind of a person so my personal account also probably you know pretty much just has banjara trail cuz i'm not a very uh uh not very fond of social media but having said that in today's world and life you cannot survive without social no, media no and our entire business is dependent on it and i'm really um, grateful for an amazing team that i have my social media team is really good and um, uh, yes it's, it's like a major part of my life so i get up in the morning with instagram and i sleep at night with instagram and it's uh, we're always looking for ideas to kind of you know make the reels go viral and right. put up best pictures because um that's what you know it is today so you 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 have to you can't have a business and then be like you know i don't want to promote it on social media no and especially with something like what we are trying to do you know reach worldwide like reach uh, every country uh, social media has been a blessing i don't mm-hmm. think there's any other way we could have done this and because today uh, you know my products are going to every part of the world you know so and it's just because of social media so um, that's something that's um, that's really great to us personally not at all a social media person but we have to do it definitely and um i know i have my favorite pieces but is there anything that you've created recently uh that you felt wow this is lovely you know just personally you know you might have your own personal favorites yeah. so anything recently that you've created that yeah. you've enjoyed yes tell us yes yes um we've just uh, created these uh long uh, embroidered jackets mm. uh, which are very versatile because you know they could be worn with something indian and uh-huh. they can be worn with jeans so the right. response we getting for this is uh, has been the best so far because uh, people from every part of the world can kind of relate to it you know and we have people in india who want to wear it for uh, weddings then you know for navratri and then we have people in like uk who just want to wear it with you know like boots and jeans and totally. uh, everybody's kind of loving that and i think again it's designing is just one thing it's it's the fabric it's the embroidery so mm-hmm. uh, it's mm-hmm. just beautiful it's a mix of uh, lots of vibrant colors and uh, lots of different styles of embroidery everything put together uh, right. in a patchwork form so you've got mirrors and you've got um, hand embroidery and you've got a little bit mix of everything so i think that's kind of uh, been the best so far excellent and before i say goodbye to you and more what would you like to see manifest or materialize for you and your company uh, in the near future um you know uh, i just uh, open oh, what i am working towards this um, the reason i didn't uh, name the brand like under my name like uh-huh. i'm more saying you know i can mm-hmm. banjara trail is because yes. i i wanted people all over the world when they buy a jacket or anything to, to you know know that yeah it's from banjara trail and then again kind of you know you always give a pamphlet to everybody a little um, thing in their order that you know what the brand stands for and how these women work so i just wanted to reach every part of the world you know that is what i see uh, in the coming years and i think we are on the right track uh, we just want this art form to be recognized and be acknowledged worldwide and we just want everybody to wear it and uh, we just want to preserve it and we want to promote it right you know so so people know what this is and um, of course in india um, 
I just want a little bit more awareness and I want people to kind of be proud of what they're wearing and know that this is their heritage and, you know, it's, it's something they should all collectively promote. So right. that's, what, that's what it is. Excellent. I'm all an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Um, I mean, you're doing really wonderful stuff um, and I can't wait to wear your designs. So I'm wishing you all the very, very best in your EA future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Take care, Anwar. All right. Bye. Bye.